properly you that work in this. I never knew you. I never knew you. I don't believe that he said he never had, but you apparently didn't have a strong relationship with him. That needs to tell me your lifestyle and your character is very important. Your character, oh my goodness, in the name of Jesus, we live in a day and age where we exalt the gift and ignore the character. We promote the gift, but we ignore the character. We don't care how the man lives. We don't care how the woman lives. As long as they can preach, as long as they can hope, as long as they can hope. But God, payday is coming up a while, and judgment day is coming. God ain't paying attention to none of that stuff. Jesus. I tell my ministers here now, I ain't stuck with whether or not you can preach. I'm from the country, and I ain't stuck it. I ain't stuck whether or not you can preach. I believe the devil can preach. I believe the devil is a big, is the best preacher you ever get. He got all the hunger to the down pat, but he can't live the life. Can't live the life. Let's go to the word of God. And then while we're telling them, I never knew you. The part me that work with this thing. That who's ever got here with these sands of mine and doing them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built this house. Upon a rock, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew, and built upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock, and everyone that heard these sayings of mine, and doing them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon a sand, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew, and beat upon that house, and in faith, and great was the fall of him. Jesus. You know, I like good preaching, y'all. I love good preaching. I mean, I, I, but it's one thing about this preaching. If you ain't building upon the word of God, you're wasting your time. Amen. Now, if anybody ever been to church and the preacher preached a message, my Lord, you feel like something that's going down your spine, and, and you jump and shout it, I know mean, I jumped and shouted out over the church. Oh my goodness, I was happy. I was hyped out. What it was, I was hyped out. I was on a high. And when I came off of that high, I realized that the man of God had done me an injustice. He did not take the time to break the bread of life and let you take the time to break the bread of life. You ain't doing nothing except hyping me out. That's all. It's happening Y'all been there? Amen. Love them words. And then you try to figure out, let me go back to the scriptures. God only gave me some good scriptures. Ain't got none. Jesus. One of the best sermons I heard was a message that didn't have a single scripture to it. Jesus. My Lord, I was all excited. Me and my wife just got married. <laughs> and the man of God gave me a message. I, you know, I, I leave and gave us some air. I said, Lord, you, and I begin to listen to that message. I said, yes, that's right down our alley. That's exactly what we need. We need to use this, Lord. Why, Lord, the man of God is preaching it unto our life. He's dealing with us every situation that we're going through. It seemed like prophetically he was dealing with us. But when I stopped listening to that tape, I figured out there was no scripture to back him up. So I was impressed with the man. But I was not impressed with Jesus. Anytime, man, a woman of God, and you call a priest the word of God, every time you take out the Bible, you exalt yourself. Every time you don't preach the word of God, you exalt your personality. And I knew the man of God. I can call his name, but I ain't gonna do that. All right. And by the way, ministers, I don't like y'all calling names of men and women of God. I call it. Because one day you don't want your name called out publicly when you miss the mark. Because that might be the day when you miss the mark. But the man of God, I remember his name to this day. But I don't remember one single scripture that he gave me. Guess what? When I got that revelation, I never listened to that tape again. I think I may have threw it away. Because I don't need something that get me all hyped up. I don't need, I don't need something to get me all excited. And I don't, and it ain't built upon the rock. It ain't built upon the rock. Upon the rock, it'll tell you how to build your husband. Upon this rock, Jesus said, I build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail. So the gates of hell is prevailing against you. It's because your salvation is not founded upon the rock, and it's made in Jesus Christ. Pastor, I'm just going through. I don't know whether or not I can make it. Is your foundation laid right? Is your foundation laid right? Is the reason why you haven't struggled in your walk with God is because you haven't built your 
and the flood came, and the wind blew, and it beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was pounded upon a rock. That still was stuff that's found upon a rock. Is your marriage found upon a rock? Or is your marriage found upon your husband? Is your marriage found upon your wife? Or is your marriage found upon your children? Is your marriage found upon your house? Is your marriage found upon your house? If it ain't found upon Jesus Christ, you have no foundation. Amen. Your marriage is in jeopardy. Amen. Is your fight? Is your finances found upon the rock? Oh, is, it, is it found upon your intelligence? Is it found upon your ability to get a job? What is it found upon? If it ain't found upon you, your finances is in jeopardy. Every part of your life, if it ain't found upon Jesus, if it don't fly through Jesus, you don't shake your ground. It's the truth of the matter. Let's go to the word of God. John chapter number one. Amen? John chapter one. And I know y'all have been preaching this more than one time. And I'm going to keep preaching it more than once. Because we got to understand that this word is important. This word is Pastor, I don't. I, and see, I, I, this is what I want y'all to do. Before you come to me for counsel, I want y'all to. I do want y'all to come to me for counsel. I do. But my question is number one, have you sought the Lord? Amen. Have you prayed about it? Amen. Have you sought it out in the word of God? Amen. Somebody said, Pastor, should I marry this man? Well, he ain't saved. He ain't stuck going to church. He don't even respect Jesus. Uh, he's some other religion. He ain't the one for you, child of God. Amen. So why are you wasting your time coming to me? Amen. The word will tell you, be not only to be yoked together with unbelief. Somebody said, that's all right. I'm just dating somebody in school, baby. Let me tell you something about dating. That's why I don't need church. Dating. Dating allows the enemy to get close enough to you to trip you up. Dating allows the devil to get close enough to you to trip you up. To take your anointing away. To take your power away. I don't believe in dating. What about you and Sister Joan? The Lord had told me that's going to be your wife. Amen. I know she would treat me like, but we weren't so called. We were twins and stuff like that. But I wasn't looking at her that way. What did he say? I dated a little bit. Y'all help me. But guess what? Me and Sister Joan did not fall. How many of y'all out here in the congregation able to date without falling? Don't outrage your hands at once. You able to let somebody come over to your house and you don't follow them. You able to cook them dinner. You able to go out to a movie with them and don't follow them. Some of y'all are strong enough, but there's a few of y'all that are not. Please watch who the devil sent into your life. I'm talking to somebody prophetic. The devil is gonna send someone into your life, and they're gonna want to get close to you. You might be in school, and then at school they begin to slip your nose. And they begin to shoot. You might meet that person at work as a co-worker. And they begin to slow walk you. If you can't get them to come to church, do not go out with them. If you can get them to come to church and stay safe and act like they really say, then you might be able to meet them in a public. Meet them in a public. Meet them in a public place. So you can break and run at the Japanese restaurant. So you can break and run at the lap hair. So you can break and run at McDonald's. So you can break and run at Popeye's at heart. So you can break and run. You get that sucker behind Paul door. You'll find out he really got a devil. And you'll find out that you ain't anointed to cast him out. I gotta go back to you on myself. I remember this young lady come on my house and I was singing. Y'all are all around from the devil. I'm going to tell y'all the truth. I'm just going to be a 